Hello everyone, question and answer video today uh, for replying to a user that sent us uh, two questions in one and they're very interesting and, and the, the, uh, the demand is very polite and intelligent because there are two topics that I always address in a, in a sense uh, talking about Germanic history from a, from a religious and military point of view that required some point a bit more of um, in-depth uh, analysis on SharePoint. So I'll simply read it. Um, I have two questions for you. Maybe you can help me or it inspires you to make a video. So I'm pretty much interested in the pre-Roman Iron Age cultures that existed in the region that now entails Germany, the Netherlands, etc. So the two main questions are how did the pre-Roman Age quote unquote Germanic religions look like to whom they prayed etc. Lots of pop history and quote quote history from the pre 80s 70s kind of lumped them together with quote unquote Viking or Norse religion which is counterintuitive since there are basically 700 1000 years between them even uh, more time if we count the written accounts of the medieval writers like Snorri Sturluson. A special interest would also uh, if there was um, a use of masks for rituals and warfare since a lot of indigenous cultures in the world use them. The other thing is the development and design of quote Germanic weapons armor, armor and the change from heroic warfare to a more organized one. Since I am an avid wargamer I noticed that there is a huge difference in depiction of Germanic warriors from the early age pre-Roman until the first century AD um, and, and the later migration period the late antiquity ones. There must have been a huge transition between the spear armed and armored shield bearer and the comparatively lavishly, lavishly equipped later ones, gods for example. It would be nice if you could make a video about one of these topics or at least point me in the right direction. So, all right, first of all, uh, I, okay, I will make a video about each of these topics and multiple ones at some point, but I already made uh, lots of videos about these topics in part, at least, especially the military one. The religious one, not so much. Actually, yes, we started a series a couple of years ago that is aimed at defining essentially the the development of medieval uh, chivalry and, and knighthood. And we essentially trace it back mostly in post-Roman uh, times, unavoidably in a uh, Germanic-dominated um, uh, picture, uh, at least in formally speaking, even though a lot was there since Roman times, since Celtic times, etc. So we, we speak better of Romano-Germanic at least. Um, and and the uh, Iranic cultures, the mm, peoples like the Scythians, the Sarmatians, that during the migration era were re-injecting, uh, are injected en masse, you know, were in an honor, also together with other peoples like the Turks, etc. Uh, in Western Europe, I made a video just recently about the uh, magic sacred swords in the Iranian-Germanic culture, also the one about the role of berserkers and Ulfadnars in early uh, Germanic societies. Um, also very recent is the uh, Comitatus Adoptio per Arma video that I made. So in there there is a lot of the religious aspect, but if you go in, especially in the migration era playlist, you find a lot and in, in Germanic in the Germanic warfare playlist as well a lot of uh, videos about equipment properly military culture also mat including material one uh, that explains a lot especially about the latter uh, question that is um, it's also simpler than it seems actually and I hope those videos can help but I will answer naturally about this briefly and in fact yeah, the second aspect is I will make a very short answer to both topics because they're really huge, especially the first one, right? Because it's a matter of properly picturing the thing right. And it's often not easy um, coming from the background that we are usually uh, given from, uh, from school. From in, in general, the West has properly not yet realized at a popular level, what the past was in those terms, culturally, religious, militarily speaking. Indo-Europeistics naturally has, um, has made a lot to explain 
these things about the first topic i can advise you um uh, Dumenzils, the religion of ancient germans uh, has come for various titles but you can find it for free on the internet it's uh you know copyright free at this point that ex it's it's a short um thing because also we don't know dramatically much about the the german the early the germanic world in general right and also indo europeistics is there because it shows you that if one doesn't study roman religion or vedic religion can hardly understand the germanic one as well and um this goes for many things historically but um let's say the, the main question is the of course was there like a difference between um what was the difference of course between early Germanic. I appreciate the quotes there, and the, uh, of course, the the Vikings had nothing to do with religion per se. The Norse, let's say, uh, indeed, um, I I appreciate that 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 um, shade is gotten right here in the question. Uh, 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 we're different. Um, yes, the the word different uh, in ways that now I can't uh, properly explain in detail in, in in this specific video. But to make the long story short there was some continuity and this continuity is um let's say it comes from put in in, in comparison to to uh historiographical chunks that are somewhat separated there is a somewhat gap between the two things the first one is the roman classical historiography that talks about the early germans then there is some ethnographic interest reviving towards late antiquity but it doesn't talk about that in a scientific sense and then the sagas collections that as you pointed out are also mediated uh, as they were written down in a christian context etc but they are also you know you know they're reliable like I, I made videos about properly the christianization of europe also how this affected the the norse society thought etc and this and we we tend also to divide to sharply christianity christianization from from the the previous pagan background and actually was a much more gradual thing than we used to think right that most dramatically you know the most dramatic breaks were fundamentally due to political problems and they were isolated mostly these countries self-christianized uh they christianized themselves literally there is if you look at lg saga that there is plenty of this realization and the the christian medium there is 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 of rel is important but much less than we think because the content that are that is expressed there we, we know is original because it has in itself some properly conceptual linguistical semantic aspect that that we do, we do know that derive uh compared from from just the, the previous that background but also the one of others um um i first of all i i also point this out that on schwerpunkt i read um indo-european religions and others by the way in a very universal sense that is to say what we constantly ignore about the past in our modernistic anxiety of categorization that is something that we got from the enlightenment from linear uh, categories onwards and that previously including in the minds of these people did not quite exist um is as if you know there were rigid you know rigid separations between people's ages places and this is probably the the single greatest problem that that we have to understand in this sense meaning spotting the differences is important as as long as it is contextualized in especially this time in the overwhelmingly shared uh universal beliefs of essentially um military religious entity of the sky that delivers military glory the roman imperium or the avesta quarena are the, the best examples of this properly in a deep deep spiritual sense a few people know that the roman virtus and the germanic furor are literally the same identical thing right doesn't matter how they kind of the term in in latin came to be used and differentiated was originally was the same exact thing right it, it was a matter of um properly of of, of capacity that the 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 the, the, vir, the the warrior uh had to to have in combat as uh, divinely inspired right aside from old what the, the modernistic aspect of this people don't even understand i think the virtue in the classical idealized sense of a of a moral person and, and the furor as the barbarity of the vicious violence of, uh, of a berserker they were actually the same identical thing i made a video about this 
and that talks about the issues it's in the Germanic warfare playlist, if I'm not wrong, because it was present in every single other Indo-European thing. It was present among the Bed, it was present among the, the, the Celts, think about the Daz Act, all these things. So um, the way we came to uh, properly define these concepts is, is a sort of the generation of the uh, primitive original that fundamentally was about the, the same thing. So um, what what we have to do here with these two chunks of Germanic history is that it's, first of all, the early Germans are properly and exactly a primitive and prehistoric people. So uh, we are extremely lucky in the West to have had this population documented in time by civilizations that had reached uh, a, a greater stage of development so to have ethnographic interest historiographic folk, such as the roman one right and we generally know peoples like the germans the celts properly in this step we call them like that because the romans called them like that the greeks call them like that but they they wouldn't call themselves like that um there was some homogeneity at some levels because peoples that live in close and similar areas tend to speak and believe the similar things but even the difference among between Celts and Germans, if you read it in the broader expansion of, you know, uh, essentially Aryan populations, these various waves always uh, emanating at some point from from the steps and resettling or descending from, um, from you know, I don't know, demographic, economical reasons such as the Germans from Scandinavia uh, in the continent, eventually the, the the Celts being pushed away. You you. You, however, understand that we're basically the same thing. The same can't say for the armament. Like, what is, like, uh, what is that by I don't know the first century AD distinguishes a German equipment from a Celtic equipment? I mean, properly, that it doesn't even make sense as a question. That that's what I usually say in my videos, right? As it doesn't really, uh, there wasn't hardly uh, any cohesion properly perceived among the same. Consider that the first attestation of of a Germanic self-definition is the sixth century AD. That is before that, uh, we, we don't. And in very particular milieu and, and environments, they were styling themselves in, in a Latinized code because they were writing in Latin at that point. But for the rest, there is no evidence. Was well, I made a video about this about the early Germanic identity? That's the title. And lots of people also do not like to hear this because uh, once again, modernism has put on the fore for reasons that are clear in the history of the 19th century of the 20th century, the idea of Germanness or any other nationality on the fore as if there was some kind of core defined ingrained uh, identity value, but these are essentially ethno-nationalistic uh, delusions that we don't even take into consideration seriously on this channel. Um, and reality is much more beautiful than that, and um, the Germans have definitely maintained some traditions uh, in uh, along this period like the, there was some homogeneity as we understand um, and but there are also certain passages that are hotly debated think about a divinity like there that eventually uh, that was the, the, the deliverer of victories in this sense has also technologically also a lot of connections with Jupiter with other gods of the Indo-European um, uh, peoples other peoples uh, and um, the, this gets eventually superseded by Thor later on, and uh, by Odin actually, uh, and even in there, what are we talking about? How would they perceive these figures? Because also Odin, in terms of the delivery of military glory and the possession for the sound of divinity, uh, you see, some some uh, religions had made a split. For example, the Romans had split military glory delivered by by the sky in, in the form of Jupiter from the the, the fury on the field that was Mars. Uh, that literally possessed crazed warrior and that they had all, all problems to eventually discipline uh, themselves along this uh, realized pattern that fundamentally you know more advanced civilizations need a collective training uh, a greater organization and the what we call the furor of the warrior of the heroic reality is fundamentally a declaration of military inferiority that is valid maybe for a tribe but when you have to rule the world uh, basically useless the, somebody has to lead somebody has to command and ha must have a prerogative some 
some uh, validity, some some authoritativeness and uh, legitimacy, etc., coming from from these actions that are have to be crowned by success through through the deity. So that this is how the system was was developed fundamentally, and the um, the, the what would an early German pray to? Right, that there were so aside from this broader kind of more dominating figures that are always connected in every religion to either the sky etc there were many other uh, like like it's normally in the pagan world uh, many other deities in the form of in an animistic form if you want like uh, tacitus says that you know that there are that the romans uh, tell us that the the, the germans uh, in in the early times were very they, they were similar to animistic they were, were animistic in a sense they they had they just knew that the sun the moon uh, volcanoes as the romans called then there were these other deities here and there there were important sanctuaries they believed that there were entities in i don't know in in springs in uh, in rocks and trees the romans up to a few centuries before actually reasoned in the same way the, the archaic roman religion the true roman religion in that sense is is, is very interesting because it actually mirrors even the think about the the archaic uh, uh, capitoline triad it's uh, the, you know if you look at the germanic religion it's, it's there right you know and and when you um when you realize that there are all these local cults that emerge from either the heroization the, the divinization of local heroes of local chieftains this is to be seen if you look at gaelic culture right uh that also, in, in a broader Celtic sense, just has one name that recurs with continental Celts, uh, you know, uh, deities, uh, to prove that fundamentally, what, what whatever the identity of these people was, was all but omnicomprehensive in, 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 I don't know, in a Celtic sense, in a Germanic sense. Uh, we're talking also about relatively, about the Germans, also relatively compressed areas. Like, the Germans went around to their migration era, but Northern Europe, like, the earth becomes you know, shrinks at that towards the north. There are not surfacially, essentially, quite big lands, nor there are many people there. So the similarity is easy to trace because literally, you know, they were close. They 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 they, they were not particularly diversified because they weren't developed enough. They they had the similar beliefs, and they were all about war because they were tribes like many other tribes. Uh, the I don't know the wolf skin, the bear skin. You find the same thing in every. In, any single country in the world, any, every tribal society, in a military sense, has these things you find in Siberia, in North America. It's n not even nearly a, a prerogative of, of Norse culture or, or anything. The Romans had the same thing. The Egyptians had the same things. Um, and you speak of of mask as well. At this point, I don't remember of any specific Germanic mask being found. I think archaeolog archaeologically, however, there is. Um, uh, surely, uh, uh, we know, however, from stories, think about the Chinocephaly of Paul the Deacon, right? We know that uh, those uh, beast warriors would, would wear uh, animal skins, probably some some masks altogether. Uh, in the in the Storia Langobardorum, that is, if you read it philologically, it, it really does sound like not a person, like that these people were literally... Uh, wolf warriors as they would believe to be uh if you if you look at maybe this on the comitatus and see what actually the comitatus was right in terms of from a moral perspective because it's 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 mind-blowing right if one has never thought about that it, it doesn't even believe that such things and these were instead the normality in the world uh up to a, a relatively few time ago and because it was the only way these peoples had to to accomplish anything, given the availability of resources or, or anything, um, and but masks were worn, were worn during sacrifices, were personification. It was all a, a bit. This is also pretty universal. But again, I don't remember I, uh, any example of this specifically from an archaeological point of view. But I'm pretty sure there are. Right, sacrifice also was always connected with naturally with these deities, with these their personifications. Uh, the blood ritual, especially in the Germanic world, was you know entailing human sacrifice, etc. was was also pretty uh, normal. Let's say we we find traces. You see, uh, even the Romans uh, evolved so quickly that they kind of didn't have the time to to metabolize the the, the to put 
to write down the, the, the things they believed up to a short time before, but there are traces of the hint to human sacrifice. It was, in a sense, there, since in late Roman times, rebellious chieftains were brought in the arena and eaten alive by, by, by uh, beasts, and it was a kind of an offer. The same existed in Celtic societies, Germanic societies. There's a, a, an all uh, disgusting revisionistic branch here that, again, operates on pattern of ethno-nationalistic delusions that says that these were kind, angelic tribes where everything was you know pure and all the other civilizations were corrupted uh, if anything from a moral standpoint it's completely the other way around always bear in mind that these peoples in terms of tribes they, they were exclusively about military activity and hence the uh, extermination enslavement and raping of the surrounding people so basically their own kin uh, and their their uh, their only moral standard was that the strongest had the right, whoever won had, in that sense, the, the, the celestial, the divine sanction to the divine right to rule over the vanquished. It was not recognized uh, even as a human being, right? Um, and uh, slavery was systematic. The, the, the fact that these cultures just had fewer slaves uh, uh, in 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 quantity, it's just because they they didn't have much in quantity <laughs> in the first place, and not because they treated any better slaves than what I don't know the Romans did or any other people out there. It was just about this the same Viking era. Fundamentally, the Viking era existed because of slavery. That if there hadn't been slave trade, there would have been properly a Viking era. Um, and uh, d there were no other moral orientations like it I, I stress this is normal in in, in that kind of stage of civilization civilizational development so even to uh, the, the in in their world not not much really changed over the centuries until they they came to define towards you know the viking era better with the creation of some monarchies the the territorialization of their power this is even especially in countries that were closer to civilization, like Denmark, like, you know, the ones that more, in fact, from the elites that still had pioneered that, that in political and social engineering to, to create, finally, a, something that was the, the, the unstable tribe, but something more advanced, had drawn massively from the other, from, from Central, from Southern Europe, where all the main civilizational inputs came at that point. And uh, they... Uh, they thus Christianized, and as we were saying before, we, we lost, let's say, a clear view. Let's say there, it's as if there was a filter between the, 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 the exact developments of those beliefs, but they were always mixed with local mm, data. But also this way of heroization probably is underestimated in a sense, the idea that a dead chieftain would become kind of a figure of a hero of, of, of some great warrior. This is evident in the sagas, but it might have happened properly especially in the earlier times in in, uh, in a more widespread system way that, that than we think it's just it's not documented this is the problem um so uh, speaking of weaponry uh, we are here a bit the same like actually the difference in equipment between early germanic times and, and the viking era is not radical right as they're not radical for for other peoples like the average warrior was just the same old guy with a spear and a shield, right? Just they start adding more wealth, especially in the migration year when they literally seize, like they conquer other peoples or seize the loot, etc. And they resettle in more productive lands. Swords, this, you know, metal items that the early Germans didn't quite have, uh, if not through the elites that are always the most international and open to, to, the, to the outside and ready to imitate the more advanced uh, political and social structures that would buy from, I don't know, from the Celts, from the Romans and all this stuff. Um, so what you see is, is, is indeed, like there is a lot of difference between the, the Germans of Augustus as primitive peoples that, that are still used, I don't know, stone spearheads or things like these and had barely any armor or anything to to the, the late, uh, the heavily Romanized, by the way, massively Romanized. And this has nothing to do with having been uh, physically within what we call the boundary of the Roman Empire, that not even the Romans nor the Germans thought at the time to be, but properly living half of a millennium next to the, the greatest civilization that the ancient world had ever seen. And of course, this massive... Uh, injection and pouring of, of material culture that, you know, that arrived to... 
far away places that knew about Rome and that Rome <laughs> wouldn't know about them. We find Roman stuff in the Urals and so on. The Germans, um, as you know, as uh, they, they fought as mercenaries extensively. Um, the, the Romans always integrated Germans um, since ever since they entered in contact with them. On, on the, um, you know, uh, the Teutonic migrations were like a violent thing, and they, they ended quickly. But as soon as the Romans conquered Gaul, and you know, some of the most successful examples of Romanization belong to to the Germans in a sense. Um, the, um, uh, the 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 in fact in the same Germany in German history we often refer to it a great divide between the Romanized lands and the non-Romanized lands that literally had two completely different histories in, in many way, in many ways. And uh, the uh, it, it's important to stress here the impact of other cultures because uh, otherwise one would think that these people by themselves all had something different. Let's say, when we talk about Roman material culture, we're also speaking about Hellenistic material culture, Celtic uh, material culture, the Hellenistic coming from the Hellenic, coming from the Near Eastern, the Celtic metallurgy, siderurgy coming from also the the Scythians, actually, from the East, even there, because the, the peoples of the steppes pioneered uh, metallurgical skills and were all connected even there with the religious idea of the magic sword, of the, the, the shamanic trends of this of this weapon that was coming from in part from the sky and part from, from the, the underworld, and the same goes for the horses. The Germans all retained this, like it's just they 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 they, they lived at the margins, let's say, of the developed world, and, and therefore they didn't develop it much further or also absorb had always had in a kind of a more primitive sense and uh, wouldn't develop them much further on their own um, so the the overwhelming majority however of, of of Germanic warriors in this sense had were basically the same thing over over time the elite got always better equipped coat of mail think about the Angon uh, heavy javelins that had the same degree of penetrativity of the Roman pilum they basically had virtually it's not a matter of what they differed in technical terms because they didn't what matters is quantitatively how which proportion of of the of the people could be equipped like that right and you know that towards roman times there's more light infantry from the roman side uh gradually and, and and heavier towards the german side and therefore by the sixth century they're kind of similar also and, and what's the difference, I don't know, between a 6th century uh, 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 um, Byzantine Butellarius and um, a Longobard Arimanus? It's very hard to tell. They came definitely from, from different realities, but in terms of practical employment, of training, etc., they were similar, right? Um, and uh, so... What what I mean is that in, in Augustus time you could have found uh, find uh, could have found a, a Germanic chieftain that was a cape covered in iron just like a Celtic chieftain because they would have the the power and the wealth to have it just it depends on how many had this right that's all the difference it's not about the distinction between the, the two people's material culture it's largely the same right uh, it's also during the migration year the broader Frankish Thuringian um, uh, material culture is the same old Central Europe, right? It's just that our peoples that, that have that uh, in greater quantity and other lesser quantity because they're the, the place where they live, they're more productive. Also, maybe their society is different, it's more or less stratified. And 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 that's also how you develop uh, cavalry, for example. It, 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 did the Germans use cavalry? They always used cavalry. It's, as soon as cavalry was used for a military purpose, it's just that, you know, in Scandinavia, even if the Bendel hero looks goes on on horseback that guy has much less uh, fellow horsemen with which to, to train than I don't know a Frankish a Merovingian uh, commerce that has a, a, a freaking enormous amount of land whereas the the, 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 the Vandal guy has just to roam around to, to survive right and, and that's all the stories of the sagas etc so but we find that material culture was dramatically similar and also pouring from, from other areas, such as the Middle East, uh, as we know, especially if you look at Sweden, the importance of the steppes, etc., that, that's very powerful, uh, in a sense. Um, and uh, you can argue that during the Viking era, 
like what was the difference like aside from certain styles of ailments etc but, but in the essence you always uh, or weapons you have always the, the guy with the with the coat of mail the shield the helmet and uh, spears uh slash javelins and a sword and maybe a double hand axe right and, th and that's the, the the full panoply of the elite right but the others would be much more normally kept in the difference in nature wouldn't be gr great with the ones of centuries before and consider that also the all these weapons for example the francisca or the danish axe they're that acquired this almost ethnic value or national character that they weren't even uh, native like the francisca seems at this point it was actually being developed from from roman axes um and uh, the same goes for the danish axe that seemingly it was a carolingian product because surprise surprise those things see serve to to break armor and uh, you know those military cultures that pioneered armor um breakers were the same uh, cultures that had more armor around right so eventually these people would just follow and even though we we see that as a more iconic or somewhat think like every single germanic people had the throwing axe why the franks we don't know it's just some literary philological passage that atta attaches it to to the people but there is no single evidence that was a national weapon uh the danish axe strikes us why because we see those guys fighting them uh, in, uh, individually like that and the reason being that uh, it's the same thing that would have done I don't know a Frankish count if he had to fight on foot uh, it's just that he he could afford to fight on horseback that is dramatic, dramatically more advantageous and that kind of combat requires all a you can't use a double hand weapon on horseback for example so we see I don't know the, the Scandinavian retinues um, as uh, the horse cars and all these things as you know some peak in del military civilizational development actually it's pretty standard back thing right that in in very warlike societies that have that uh, semi at that point quasi professional elite goes around raiding etc they, they they functionalize in this hyper um violent and individual individual sense because again they 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 haven't they still can't afford a broader Discipline, uh, disciplinary organization and uh, collective training because they, they're not centralized enough as, as, as societies and therefore uh, statally speaking therefore they they invest more on, on some individuals that may perform dramatically well dramatically well from an individual point of view but collectively speaking not not excessively right and, and there are lots of examples of how in fact we, we dramatically uh overestimate the impact of, the, of those peoples in in military history right the, the world war was basically had the same thing i mean the world i don't know look at europe right uh europe had uh, you know dr way more advanced militaries than i don't know the viking one but today we still reason those times in terms of viking era right the mediterranean surely had a very different opinion of what the viking era would deserve as a title even though they used the same norse mercenaries themselves um but again, as a military historian, the essentials, the way how people were equipped, weapons, uh, technology by themselves are barely relevant, right? All what is relevant is collective training. Uh, in a in a strategic sense, uh, that's all we thought we through von Clausewitz through the all all the military historical evidence that we have, right? Uh, what matters is not what you have in your hand; is how much you want to kill the person in front of you, and finding the ways to do it even when you are disadvantaged. For example, in terms of equipment, this is war. This is real war. War is asymmetric by definition, uh, and it works always that way. So, um, the if we want, I, I made a video actually on early Germanic warfare that explains what uh, a bit the the, char the ethnic characteristics of 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 their uh, warfare were more like let's say that the germans were had a higher military quality than the celts the celts in many ways are dramatically overestimated in um, in military terms uh and the the germans instead were simply because they, they were less nationally cohesive the germans were more cohesive just like the best celts militarily speaking were the more cohesive peoples like nationally that is the the Albertians, the the belgians the others really had a, a 
let's be honest, they, they didn't have a high military, they, they had a low military average, right? But since there is a lot of fanboyism about that too, people are never happy about to hear these things and they have to in, invent. And, and when you understand that they don't know the difference between individual and collective training, you you know, you're, you're basically not talking with a strategically literate person. Um, and the Germans were more compact, more cohesive. They had, the, the Romans observed that the, the way they held the ground, they never, the Celts, put all the emphasis on the big charge, right, en masse. The Germans instead were much more cautious um, and they, they would advance much more slowly and retreat much more slowly, taking back the wounded, etc., trying not to lose, to break, to lose cohesion. They had much more control, right, than, than other tribes. And the reason being that they spent their entire existence fighting, right, uh, compared at least to other people, so, okay, not quite literally, but de facto, Germany was a much more militarized country than, I don't know, than Britain, than Gaul before the Roman conquest and all, uh, you know, etc. So these are a bit the things that really matter. In terms of equipment, no, right? I, I don't see it. The, the Germans basically have gradually evolved with a Romano-Celtic pack of um, material culture in arms and armor. And eventually they got this important um, Iranic influence from the Sarmatians and also in part zootechnic capacities, etc., from the Huns. So that from the 6th century they managed to produce uh, arms and armor and, you know, to organize themselves military, militarily in, a, in, a, in an effective way, um, mirroring not the Roman, let's say the, the, the Byzantine army remained always the, the standard of, of quality of higher quality in in, the, in Europe and the Mediterranean in terms of military effectiveness. There is great proof of that, but again, the problem is not how the, the troops were equipped, it's how they were trained and how cons how strong was the, the state, etc., compared to the, Romanic German the Latin Germanic kingdoms that, you know, took a long time before developing into something that could surpass the, the East that, that happened roughly between by the 12th century, right? And um, the... Um, what I want to say is that ah yeah also that they the this step culture range act in Germanic one brought to the um, to the preeminence also sword making but arm, arms and armor production uh, in Europe shifted towards especially in, in the Latin Germanic world towards the Rhineland whereas before the center of arms and armor production was uh, the Celto Roman Noricum. And um, yeah, they, that's how eventually the development went. And but from there on, there is an increasing uh, feudalization. We can be also anachronistic about the term that is pioneered by the Frankish kingdom. That is basically the greatest power out there. Has the most mm, the, the most professional elite since an early age, even before um, the Carolin Carolingian times were already oriented like that in pours civilization like crazy like in terms of material especially of, of military culture like all the sword look at viking ear swords how many are made in the frankish rhineland right or how much of all did that hardware is fundamentally uh, the franks were the top at the top of weapons uh equestrian capacities etc so that that's the, the the finest and from there on also in low medieval times essentially from france the Fra Frankish feudalism emanates in, in all the art and surroundings in, in Italy, in Germany, in, in Spain, uh, with the Norman conquests in England, in uh, in Sicily, and then eventually with the conquest of the of Constantinople in 1204, also in Greece, in Asia Minor. This massive feudal, feudal element that eventually, and paradoxically, is the one from which actually modern states will be born in Western Europe, like such. Um, and corresponds to that to, to a further stage of uh, civilizational development that in fact was always you know also reflected from a military point of view so I hope not it, I when I when I talk about these things I can't say very harsh things that may sound as such as say oh, you know too radical too tranchant let's say but I um, I care extremely I, I've, I've been studying these things for years now um, it's more, for more than a decade and it the picture that I that I that I'm getting is ever clearer. Like the the properly in a diachronic and comparative sense, this is the the, the synthesis capacity that you have is what 
renders you this back, right? So the difference, the I appreciated the question because it 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 observes how you know there are differences, but there is also uh, you know there's also a, a pattern in in this evolution that that is shared with others, and and therefore that's a good basis to start from then i'm surely forgetting something you s hear you you mean uh, for example the better keep ah this is interesting when you say that that the migration era germans were better equipped you make the example of the gods right that that's good because the gods objectively were the most um uh, hierarchized uh most iranicized and romanized of the germanic peoples uh, and in fact, they had a more advanced system of government and uh, and also a more orderly military, etc. Not just because they settled eventually in Italy and in Spain, they were you know the the, the most still functional Roman lands uh, with all the armory production and stating all the the military infrastructure present available, etc. But properly because they had gone through a process of political and social engineering that the Romans mediated, the, the Hans also in part uh, contributed to that, that is to form a hierarchy, that is to that uh, primitive Germanic society where there are all clansmen that are essentially mafia bosses that, that are always looking ferociously at each other to speaking, say, of freedom, but just, you know, doing their own business in their own clan. Uh, ruthlessly and then just being concerned that somebody wouldn't rise you know to, to be more uh, more powerful than the others actually is is uh, is cut down because of the needs of the migration as we were saying and a chief emerges right the, the temporarily appointed chieftain for war uh, of early times becomes an ever more uh, much more of a king the king that is technically um uh, an unknown institution is in Germanic world, and the Romans engineered and also to to have this single point of reference, having a leader that could keep all the other clans and you know in in, in so under some control, so that they wouldn't have to to convince everybody in, in a mess, but would make things more orderly and to vehiculate this this uh, thing in a in a in a in a positive fashion. The Ostrogoths are probably the best example of this, and in the their settlements in Italy as well. So, um, but again, like I made lots of videos about this stuff. So, if you are interested in it, I will. I know, and now I have. You can check that now. I have really understand. I have to make history of religions videos because there are too many things I'm seeing here. I'm not presenting any firm pattern point of reference for. And instead, I see that um, the audience is interested, and I should I should provide some answer. So, for now, I uh, like I hope to have answered partially to the question. I appreciated the question, and f uh, anyhow, for now, I'll stop it here. I just hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it. Otherwise, leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming content. And for now, I thank you heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time, and see you next time. Bye.